We have the Atlanta Falcons taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is your week 8 2024 prediction and preview video. Hit subscribe if you're new. Also hit the like button. Let's start off with the home team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The last time these two teams faced each other, it was fireworks. But the Atlanta Falcons won that game 30-36 to in overtime. When I look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, this team is drastically different. They're coming off an ugly loss against the Baltimore Ravens. Losing a game is one thing. Losing your two top wide receivers is another. Mike Evans is out for this game dealing with a hamstring injury. And unfortunately, Chris Godwin is out as well. He dislocated his ankle against the Baltimore Ravens, which makes me question Ty Bowles while seeing the game with only a couple minutes left. But when you look at this matchup right here, you're going against the Atlanta Falcons team that is having problems putting pressure on the opposing quarterback. Last week, Becker Mayfield played well until he threw those two inter interceptions in that game and the game got out of hand they have to run the football against the Atlanta Falcons the Atlanta Falcons have been struggling against the run game so far this season and Baker Mayfield has legs of his own you have to get Sean Tucker involved Rashard White and Bucky Irving as well in the run game now you don't have Mike Evans you don't have Chris Godwin but you still have those running backs and you have big Cade Iden Cade Iden last week eight catches 100 receiving yards they have to go out there and buy Baker Mayfield enough time. And Baker Mayfield obviously has to take care of the football, but get those running backs going in this game. Use Bucky Irving as a screen back in the receiving game. Use Rashard White in the receiving game as well. They have to find ways to go out there and compensate for the injuries of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. I think they can do that with Cade Iden in these running backs, but it's going to be tough. They also have other wide receivers on this team as well. Sterling Shepard is a veteran. I don't expect for him to go out there and give you much, but he has a connection with Baker Mayfield, their former college teammates. You also look at another wide receiver on this team, and Jalen as well. Jalen has been a good player at times this season for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but he has been able to play that number one or number two wide receiving position. You also look at Trey Palmer as well on the season. Only five catches, 61 receiving yards, one receiving touchdown on the season. They have to get the run game going, and Coach Liam has done a great job of that this season, but it's going to come down to the offensive line and working off of play action. You want to go out there and let Baker Mayfield spread the ball around, and he isn't new to this type of situation. Many years ago with the Cleveland Browns, before they made the trade to bring in Odell Beckham Jr., he was dealing with a lot of unknown wide receivers. So don't count out Baker Mayfield in this matchup with these weapons. But then it come down to this offensive line and can they run the football enough and work off of play action. I'm not saying go out there and don't let Baker Mayfield throw the football at all. He should have over 25 pass attempts in this game for sure. But at the same time, they have to go out there and run this offense through their running backs. That's, that's their best chance for going out there and winning this football game. This really sucks for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And like I mentioned before, I have a lot of questions about Todd Bowles and why Chris Godwin was still in that game. And it just sucks to see for the Buccaneers as a whole. Defensively, last week, they had a tough time stopping Derrick Henry in that run game. And I'm worried about this because their rushing defense up to this point has been one of the best rushing defenses in the NFL. But you're not going against one. You're going against two very good running backs, Ty Algier and B. John Robinson. I understand the Thursday night football game. Many weeks ago, they played very good defense. But they have to go out there and set the tone. Put pressure on Kirk Cousins. You have Kalijah Kansi and Vita Vea. The man had over 500 passing yards and four passing touchdowns the last time that these two teams faced each other. Todd Bowles has to do a better job of going out there, fixing his defense, put the blitz on Kirk Cousins if you have to, but be very careful by doing that because Drake London, Darnell Mooney, and Kyle Pitts can get behind you. I'll also say this as well. Antoine Winfield is one of the best safeties in the NFL. Can he go out there and can he give you enough over the top if you want to blitz? And it's interesting to note this as well. Antoine Winfield was injured the last time these two teams faced off against each other. So pay attention to Antoine Winfield in this game. He's been solid this season. but He's only played a few games because of those injuries. I also look at guys like Yaya Diaby. Can he come off the edge and give you enough pass rush? We know that Vita Vea is going to go out there and stop the run. And Kalaja Kansi is a good run stopper as well. But these other guys have to step up on this defensive line. And a guy like Levante David, he's going to be key in this game for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to stop the run game of the Atlanta Falcons. Put all the pressure on Kirk Cousins and do not let him be able to get the football quickly 
Do not let him be able to get the football quickly out of his hands like how he did a couple weeks ago on Thursday night. Now, let's talk about the Atlanta Falcons. This team was on a roll, but unfortunately, last week, they suffered a tough loss against the Seattle Seahawks. They have to get back to their roots. Get back to what you did when you went on that win streak, when you beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, when you beat the Carolina Panthers, and when you beat the New Orleans Saints. Go out there and establish the line of scrimmage. B. John Robinson had 103 rushing yards, one rushing touchdown last week. He averaged five yards to carry. Ty Algier, five carries of 36 rushing yards. The problem is... The game got too out of hand, so they cannot go out there and just run the football repeatedly over and over again. Against this Buccaneers team, do not give up on the run game. Similar to how I said with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, run your offense through your running backs, you have to do the same thing. Give Ty Algier the football as much as possible, and the same with B. John Robinson. But you can also go out there and test out the secondary with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You have a guy in Drake London who has been a superstar this season, but who led the team receiving last week? It was Kyle Pitts. Get him involved in one-on-one opportunities with the linebackers. Do some motion with Darnell Mooney as well. Kirk Cousins had two interceptions last week, got sacked three times. You have to find a way to get the pressure off of Kirk Cousins. He's not the most mobile quarterback in the NFL. When this team has struggled offensively, it's because the offensive protection wasn't there up front with Kirk Cousins. We know that Ty Bowles, he loves to blitz. So bring in an extra tight end to help out with that protection, and you can take some deep shots down the field because if you give Kirk Cousins enough time in the pocket, he can get the football to Darnell Mooney. He can get the football to Kyle Pitts. He can get the football to Drake London. And we saw what happened the last time these two teams played each other. Kirk Cousins had one of the best games of his career. But he should not have over 500 yards passing in this game. He shouldn't even have over 400 yards passing in this game. It should be a balanced attack. And Coach Robinson, the offensive coordinator, has to do a better job with that. Get some balance between the run game and the pass game and help out your quarterback and Kirk Cousins and dial back on those interceptions. When I look at the defense for the Atlanta Falcons, they have to play better. Last week, they let Geno Smith go out there and air the football out on a repeated basis because they cannot put pressure on the opposing quarterback. And this is what bothers me in this game. Yes, you have Matthew Judon. Yes, you have Grady Jarrett and David Anyamata. Matthew Judon is a very good pass rusher, but he, but he, but you need to go out there and get him some help. You need to go out there and get another edge rusher on this team to step up and match his intensity on the outside. When I look at Baker Mayfield, the more time you give him inside the pocket, the more dangerous he becomes, even without Mike Evans and even without Chris Godwin. So you have to go out there and find a way to put pressure on him as well. I wouldn't even say go out there and blitz the entire time, but I will say go out there and do this. You can play a lot of press man coverage now because who's going to be the deep threat for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I know that Baker Mayfield can go out there and he can beat you with his arm. And I know these running backs can go out there and they can give you damage. Make these wide receivers beat you in space. Make them have to get behind guys like Justin Simmons and A.J. Terrell and Jesse Bates in this game. I would use Jesse Bates as an inbox safety in this matchup to help stop the run game. Justin Simmons over the top, he can handle his own. And we saw him do that against the Kansas City Chiefs. This is what makes this matchup so intriguing when you have those two top safeties in this game. So just pay attention to the safeties and pay attention to A.J. Terrell as well. And also be on the lookout for the other players in this secondary. When I look at the front seven, you have to go out there, put pressure on Baker Mayfield and stop the run. Stop the run and make the wide receivers beat you. And Baker Mayfield has sneaky mobility. Make sure he stays inside the pocket. This should be a win for the Atlanta Falcons, whether it's ugly or not. With that being said, I am concerned with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, how their offense look without those two top wide receivers but I believe their run game can be a huge factor but right now it's going to be tough for the Buccaneers to go out there and win this game I'm taking the Atlanta Falcons to win this football game 28 to 14 but let me know in the comment section below who do you have winning this game the Atlanta Falcons or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button if you like the video hit the like button most importantly when each and every last one of you guys stay safe stay positive thanks for the video guys God bless peace